Hello everybody, how you all doing? It's another beautiful Saturday and you're tuning to your favorite TV show. App Close is only on Max TV, Sports Entertainment and more. Today is going to be different too because today we are going straight into fashion. We're going to talk about styling and artists. We're going to talk about wearing good shoes. We're going to talk about African clothesline. We're going to talk about fashion in Ghana and also in Africa and also international. And you already know. Your homeboy, Marshall, I'm up here. You can follow me or you can join the conversation via social media at MaxTVGH or at Oheniba Marshall. Today is going to be different, as I said earlier. And uh, not to waste too much time, let me just introduce my guest because today is going to be fashion stuff. But you already know, fly, sexy, dope, straight for y'all out there. I'm all Louis. All you have to do is just pick up a phone and call 0541004202 Z Clothing inside a crown new town. He will hold you down. Okay, so not to waste too much time, let me get into my guest, and you know already know, right? Okay, so my guest is a young gentleman who has traveled the globe using fashion. His his won several awards through creativity, through uh, mind blowing designs for uh, making Ghana proud out there internationally. Today we're going to talk about his story from grass to grace just to get to know why or the reasons why he entered into fashion. Okay, my brother, Abrantier, the gentleman. How you doing, brother, bro? I'm good. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah, it's been a while. I, I, I see you traveling around the globe and chilling and, you know, on a bigger runway and things. Uh, how is it like for you? Uh, I say life has been up and down, we've been in the game, you know. Fashion is all that I do for me, fancy. Yeah. I've been doing this for a while, and because of the pandemic, now in Ghana, I'm trying to push it locally. Mm. But, but fashion, has fashion always been your passion? I would say uh, I, I see myself as an artist, as in, I love art. Okay. Everything art. Mm. Yes. Fashion is what I do professionally. That's what I studied at school. Oh, okay. But I also have uh, done graphics. I also done film on the side as well. So, mm. but fashion is the main thing that I do now. Okay. So you're talking about school. Where did you do school? Mm. Okay. So let me say, from secondary school, I went to go for the tech. Okay. I did. I did. In the, I did visual arts. Mm. Then I, I went on to university. I went to KNUST. Oh, okay. I did industrial arts. Oh, okay. And I majored in textiles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so from there. I work. I've, I, I could see I've probably worked with almost the textile firms in Ghana. Wow! Before starting the brand, I uh, entered the gentleman. Wow! So still in fashion, textiles that has been my life. And okay, so your mom, dad, the siblings were they supportive of what you wanted to do? I would say uh, yes and no. You know, when you are young and you probably want to pursue something, something that you have a vision for. Mm. At times, it's quite hard when parents. The picture that you see, they don't see that. Yeah. They want you to probably go at a certain path. Mm. But it's up to you to let them know, okay, that is what you want to do. And if you are doing it well, then you probably have their support. It wasn't easy at first, but as time goes on, they realized that is what I wanted to do. I'm, I'm really keen on doing it, so they supported me. Okay. That is where we are now. Wow. <laughs> so after school, that uh, you went to KNS, KN KN University yeah. to study textiles. Yes. So after your textiles, and uh, what happened to you? So let me say, uh, bef before, while I was in school, while I was in university, mm -hmm. I, I, I was into radio on campus. Okay. Okay. I did a bit of radio on campus and I was into film as well. So whilst, right after uni, uh, I had my own project out. That is actually a series. Really? That is actually a series. So bef after the series, then I, I probably went back to my first, that's the fashion that I studied at university. Oh, okay. so then uh, uh, let me say this, uh, mm -hmm. the series mm -hmm. was actually sponsored by Techno. Techno? Yes, and I, I'll give respect to Max. Okay. And he's been a long time uh, person probably helping the art and wow. Ghana entertainment. So I would say but, yes. But what happened? I mean, you, you were learning textiles in the university. Invest, yes. But how come you entered into movies, series okay. and music? Okay, so... Uh, if I should go a little bit down, mm -hmm. I was into production. I, I have worked with a lot of production houses with regards to film. Wow. And before UNST, before KNUST? Before KNUST, yes. Oh, okay. So I have a background of that film and production. Okay. And from then, I work with a couple of people. I work with the likes of Kovia Jololo, oh. Nadia Buari, 
just were you styling them in the movie or it was your I, own I, i'll say i i was then working with a production house from holland Okay. So that is where the passion and the training came, came from. from. Okay. Then from that production, they were more into movies. Then from then, I realized, okay, I could probably learn a little bit. And there was this curriculum activity at KNUST mm -hmm. regarding to film. So I did a little bit of studying and I started my own project. Oh. And it was, a, it was a TV series. Aside that, I've probably done set design and costume design for some films. So okay. that's... That flair was there. But where did the passion came from? The passion, I would say, right from infancy, I love art. So anything I got to do with art, being it from, being it graphic design, being it textiles, I'm into it. Oh, okay. So moving from one production to the other, helping in each other way, being it costuming, What were you doing set. In, in production? Were in production. you editing? Were you a road manager? Were you... Okay, so that is it. Mm -hmm. I did continuity. Okay. I did set designing. I did costuming, yeah. and I happened to follow one, the, the Holland production I, I told you about. Mm -hmm. There was this man who bought a project from Holland, that he, he is a renowned director, who is very good. So he was the one who actually introduced me into script writing, mm -hmm. and probably how to direct and all that. So while I was in university, mm -hmm. I did a ball course on film and production. Oh, okay. So that actually bet my film parts. Okay. That all, all this while I was doing what I was studying at KNUST was industrial arts, textiles. Textiles. Okay. So right from KNUST, I came out, I did my service at GTP. Okay. I work at GTP as a textile designer. Okay. While I was at KNUST, I was doing my internship ATO. I did some work at ATO. Mm -hmm. While I was at GTP, I was doing other works with GTM, the Ghana Textile Manufacturing Company. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing that all around the clock. Mm -hmm. Then, I stopped all that and started a brand, I branded the Intiman on my own. Wow. So when you were with the GTP mm -hmm. working with them, mm -hmm. that's where the idea came in that you wanted to start your own brand then. Okay, so the love for textiles, mm -hmm. I realized that most most of our when it comes to African prints mm -hmm. were mostly patronized by ladies. Yeah. And if probably you see a guy wearing print, it's just a little maybe just for a shirt. Yeah. So there was this minimal usage of print when it comes to menswear. Okay. And me being a lover of print and a designer of print, I put it up upon myself to push the agenda of men to probably use more prints for what they wear. Oh, okay. So I, I used to wear, I, I wear print a lot when it comes to events. Mm -hmm. And people started calling me a brand tier, brand tier because I was looking different from the normal regular, regular men yeah. that you see. So people started calling me a brand tier, brand tier, brand tier. So, and so, so, what, what, the print was it? Was it more of a suit print or a, a cut across? Anything you can think of when it comes to menswear, mm -hmm. being it jacket, being it pants, being it accessory, bow tie, mm. waistcoats, the regular shirts. Because most people know you as a, mm -hmm. a brand here, the sure. gentleman, sure. mostly suits. Sure. So mm. I was doing. Uh, I tried to do what the Westerners do. Okay. To be local, even though what I'm wearing is made in Ghana. Okay. But it looks more Western because. Yeah. It is well tailor-made. Okay. So imagine you see this and it's prints. There's no way you might think it's foreign. Yeah. But if I'm wearing this on a regular day, you might think it's foreign. But it is made in Ghana. Oh, okay. So to push that agenda for Ghanaians to know that, okay, we can equally do what you are doing. Mm -hmm. But probably infusing our print and our local textiles into it. Okay. That is how can we bet our brand here. Wow. So the gentleman came up as a result of, started traveling. Okay. Then you have to explain yourself to people. Why Abrante? You have to mm -hmm. explain yourself every time you tell people Abrante means a gentleman. But Abrante, Abrante is it gentleman. part of your original name? No, 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 no. So how did it? My name, my name is Ohenibaya Abono. Okay. People started calling me Abrante because, because you know Abrante means a gentleman exactly. in, our, in our Khan language. Yes. So people started calling me Abrante. And I started traveling outside and okay. I have to explain what's the meaning of Abrante to people outside. Okay. So you have to tell them Abrante means a gentleman. And why don't I add a gentleman to the name Abrante? Mm. So I added a gentleman to the name of brand here to be a brand the gentleman as the a brand name. Okay. So that, that okay. is how That's we bet a brand the gentleman as a brand name. Wow. You, you've been traveling. I mean, I've seen uh, a couple of uh, runways you've been doing mm. out there mm. internationally. Um, how do you get those gigs? Okay. So let me say, kind can't see of the kind of work we do. Mm -hmm. I see it as a result of how my life is. I told you I probably get into film. Yes. So it's a, it's a couple of things that happens in my environment and 
how I take my whole fashion. Mm. I don't just do clothes. I tell stories. Mm -hmm. Okay. And anything you tell a story, people can identify with it. Yeah. So let's say I put up a collection and the collection name is IE. Okay. Definitely, I'll do a photo shoot for that collection. I won't just do a regular photo shoot with people just wearing clothes standing. Mm. There's a concept behind the collection that I do. Okay. IE means praise. I put up a collection with praise. What we praise God with? We praise God with instruments. So you see instruments in my, in my shoots, in my okay. fashion video and all those things. Okay. So these things, when we put up outside online, people tend to see. The fashion world tend to see. They realize that there's something different about this. Mm -hmm. So when they see, they like the story you're telling. Yeah. You get invitation from outside. Being it, just mentioned the, the fashion places we know. Okay. Paris, Rome, Milan, Ekata cross. So they wow. see those things and they, they love what your story that you're telling. Mm. So we get invitation across. The invitation that we get that we've been turned down. Okay. So that is how come the brand got the attention of okay. international, international recognition. recognition and one thing has led to the other and we're still moving. But why did you decide to choose fashion design as a career? Because it's I'll, not I'll, easy. I would say, okay, so let me say this. Mm -hmm. When I was young, my auntie was a seamstress. Okay. Back then, I would say, when you are young and you want to probably go and play soccer and you'll be worried, oh, come and probably make some covered buttons, mm -hmm. doing some stiff work. You might think they are worrying you. Yeah. I didn't know my auntie was sewing something into me. Okay. So it was something that was at home and then I thought that I was being punished because I wanted to go and play and you're being forced to go and do yeah. that. <laughs> but along the line, one thing led to the other, study visual arts, I realized I love the textiles parts. Mm -hmm. I wanted to take it to the notch higher. Okay, then let me go to invest and study it. Mm -hmm. Let me learn textiles into details. Let me know the chemistry, the chemicals that go into probably making the prints, yeah. the design, the repeats, the weave structure, all those things come into play. Then one thing led to the other. So after all this print, what are they using for costume? How is costume made? Construction of costume, all those things come into play. And okay. One love led to the other, and, and then, that is where we are now. So what, 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 do you, what do you love about fashion design? I'll say that the, the artistic part, every, every, when it comes to fashion, it's all about the artistic part. It's not just about making clothes, stitching, mm -hmm. but it's a whole artistry. Okay. You can't you can just, if somebody calls me, I want an outfit, I have to ask you what is the location of the outfit. I have to know the colors you like, the mood, mm -hmm. your skin tones, all these things play. Mm. I don't just make off. There's a whole artistry okay. that needs to be understood. If I'm making clothes, there are a thousand people who make clothes, yeah. but there has to be something behind it. Art, you have to love art. You have to feel it mm. before you can express it. So okay. all these things come into play before a product comes out. So it's not just about making clothes and selling it. Mm. You tell a story and try to let people know what goes into it when you're probably making clothes. Mm. Okay, so if you have so much knowledge about you, mm -hmm. fashion design, mm -hmm. what makes it difficult for other productions to be made in Ghana? Okay, so there are structures. When it, com when it comes to fashion, there are structures. Okay. If, if you look at a fashion house, there is a machinist, there's people who probably do the illustration, people who do styling, people who do the stitching, people who do the finishing part. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. There are different structures. Okay. Outside, before even a print is made, before it will probably be converted into a, an outfit that you are wearing. Yeah. You are wearing an LV. Yeah. The LV logo didn't just come by. Yeah. It is being patented. Okay. You are wearing an LV outfit. I can see some plants in there. Yeah. Up. The plants and the LV logo mm -hmm. is not just plays. Yeah. They are structures. Okay. They are repeats. Okay. You have the half drop, you have the full drop, you have mm -hmm. the just a lot of ways people sit down and think about all these things before the print is done, before even the outfit is made. Okay. Things like these are patented. It is for a particular person. Nobody can just pick it and go ahead and just make an LV. Oh. So outside system work. If you should probably make this without, without an LV knowledge mm -hmm. or LV approval. You be sued or something. A lot of things go into it. Okay. So when all these structures are put in place and all these things work, mm -hmm. people can just pick up people's intellectual property and just play with it. When the, all these structures work, mm -hmm. you know that, let me say, I have an art artist where a fake brand of an abranted gentleman. I can pick the artist on. Mm -hmm. If I can pick an artist on, okay. definitely, 
mm-hmm. I'm going to make money from it. Mm. If I'm probably collaborating with an artist or a TV presenter like yourself, okay. the moment you wear it, your viewers see it and they love what you are wearing. Mm-hmm. They would like to wear what anybody is wearing. Yeah. Okay. So you being a brand, wearing an Abrante brand, mm-hmm. you have people who follow you. Exactly. So they buy into that. That is, that is the reason why brands pick on brands when people pick their property without their right okay. approval authority. So wow. it, it, there are a lot of fuss and that going into it. When all these structures work mm-hmm. in our country, yeah. our entertainment industry, which the fashion aspect also falls apart, mm-hmm. we all thrive. Wow. So wow. These, these are some of the key, key things that we are missing here. Okay. I know musicians complain about the login system regard to radio and all that. Yeah. The same way we also complain about, even with regard to our prints, mm-hmm. when, you, when you go on the local market, yeah. there are a lot of imported prints that come, that come in that people use. There are a lot of textile firms in Ghana that their prints are being pirated. So all these things come in play. Mm-hmm. Imagine a, a brand creates a print brand with GTP. Yeah. It is solely for a brand mm-hmm. The Chinese print on the market cannot just pick it and make a knockoff because they can probably get it cheap. Yeah. So all these structures have to be in place and okay. it goes to, to a lot of things. So these are some of the challenges the fashion industry Challenges with regard to materials, mm-hmm. production when it comes to machines and all yeah. these things are, are key problems that we face. I know some people, they have the designs out here but then they go to China to print it out. Because things over there are cheap. Okay. Things over there are cheap. So it means cost of production is cheap in it's China. High. But it's high in at, Ghana. It's high in Ghana. Looking at you getting a plane ticket to China and back and forth, you know, don't you think producing it here in Ghana would be much better? Or here it's not quality? So definitely, if you want to probably make a print in Ghana mm-hmm. and you go you go to a, a I, I keep on mentioning GTV because I've worked there and yes. never go something. Yeah. Yes. Definitely because you are going to GTP to print, the raw fabric that you are going to print on, they are importing it. Okay. So that alone even gives the price a notch okay, higher. We are not making the raw fabrics that fabrics we print on this. here. Okay. I'm okay. sure the chemicals, the dyes, and all those things that they use even in printing in Ghana, they import them. Yeah. So all those things add up to why most things that probably are made here times are expensive or probably on the high side okay. so all these things come come into come into play and it makes production high so high. before even the print is made it's already expensive before okay. you'll probably be making to an outfit mm-hmm. so all these things come into play and trust me production is already high wow <laughs> <laughs> so when you uh when you go out there to on, on the runways to you know exhibit your 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 productions for people to do you get clients to order from you out there yes uh fashion show the 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 brain or probably the reason behind a fashion show Mm -hmm. is to push what you are showcasing to a larger audience yeah when there is a fashion show they are they are press and buyers who come at the fashion. Most of the time, fashion shows outside, the, those you see at the front shows, okay. they are buyers and people who own multiple stores who are okay. there to probably buy a particular design and tell you, mm-hmm. I want you to make thousands of these pieces for me. me. Okay. And if you realize at the end of the fashion show, there are a lot of media men who are probably having foot cameras taking a lot of pictures. They are representing different blogs and different production houses, taking that news. If it's probably are coming from different countries, take it to different, different, different portals. Okay. So fashion shows are there to blow what you are doing or probably sell you. Mm. Not people buying it outright at that place. Okay. But yes, there are people who probably come to fashion show, they want to buy that outright. It happens. Mm. But the main essence of fashion show is to push the brand out and expose you to a mm. bigger audience or probably a larger market. Mm. That is not a fashion show. Mm. But in as much as that is happening, People also come to you after the runway okay. to buy the exact thing they saw on the runway. Yeah. That one, the price is probably definitely going to be high because it is just a, a masterpiece or a, a prototype mm. for what is yet to be made. Okay. So that is what goes into it. So people just want to buy what the knockoff from the runway happens. Wow. wow. But if I'm talking for myself, yes, if I'm going for fashion shows, I mostly go to South Africa a lot. Okay. I have a market in South Africa. Mm-hmm. So they know there's a show maybe June, July. Yeah. Abante will be coming. I have clients in South Africa. They know I'll be in their country, country around okay. this time. Okay. The place in orders. 
So definitely, if I'm going for a fashion show, I already have stuff that I'm going to sell. So, okay. And most of the time, the fashion show comes with exhibition. Mm -hmm. At times, there maybe there might be a one week exhibition before the fashion show. Yeah. Okay. So okay. there, you can probably have your sales going sales. on. Okay. If let's say you're probably taking out production to uh, taking product to Europe yes. to sell, uh -huh. pricing is key. Definitely, you're selling. Either you are selling in public dollars or euros, or definitely the, the currency rate and mm. value is different. And people, if it is something people love, trust me, you get a lot of patronage. Okay. So it is something that is good. Most of the time, when we are traveling outside, we make sure that we make contingency for people who really want to buy what we are probably going to exhibit. Okay. In that sense, yes. But how is it like in Ghana? Have you ever had uh, clients ordering like 500,000 uh, products from you before? I won't say thousand because one, okay. production even here, mm -hmm. we don't have that outside. There are mass industry that probably you can just make a prototype and take it to them for them to do mass production for you. Okay. Mass production is a problem here. Yes, we have we have oh. we have the capacity to do more, but not as in thousand at a go. No. Okay. That is a problem. I do tailor made stuff, bespoke stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't do mass production. Okay. I don't do mass for that. I'm here with Abrantia, the gentleman, and we are talking fashion today. Let's go for a break. When we come back, we enter into artist styling. Okay, so welcome back. If you're just tuning in, you are watching Up Close Only on Max TV Sports Entertainment and more. And we are here with Abrantia, the gentleman. We are talking about his story from grass to grace and also talk about the fashion industry in Ghana and also international. Around here. So, Brother. fashion. How do you keep yourself updated with the latest trend in the fashion industry? Okay. Uh, so, if you're talking about trends, mm -hmm. uh, one thing I always tell people, you don't follow trends. Okay. I don't like following trends. Okay. I like to pick trends, study them, and we create something. Okay. Something because, out of the trend. Yes. If, if you want to follow trends, mm -hmm. your personality might not probably fit the trend or probably what is in vogue now. Okay. Not everything fits everybody. Mm. It is up to you to know your style. Identify your style. What fits for you. Okay. And always try and evolve with it. If a client comes in and say, okay, I've seen this trend. I want to, uh, I want the same thing. Would you, would you do it for them? Uh, it depends. If you, if you talk to the person, the person really want to have the same thing. Mm -hmm. You advise. Okay. If you advise and it's still not going well, you can get it done from the person. But professionally, most of the time, when you advise people, they take it because they know you are talking from a professional point of view. Okay. They take it and probably amend one or two things. And yes, there now there are a lot of this Cubana style that are in trend. Yeah, it is probably been an old school. I don't know if you've seen it. There is this shirt with the lapel. The normal yeah, line the lines, yes, it is yes. it is in vogue mm. most of the brands that actually picked that on way back Visashi picked that on okay they had a lot of a lot of top designers back then were doing that now it is in vogue because it is in vogue we are inculcating that into our african setting i tell people yes you can do it what makes it an african because trust me the fabric that i use for that those styles are mostly satin and light light fabrics Okay. And women you are wearing that, you look too foreign. So for me, I'll pick it, make it a Ghanaian identity. Mm -hmm. I'll try and infuse that with a, a little bit of Ghanaian touch. There are now even African print that comes even in silk. Mm -hmm. So why don't we use that for, for those kind of outfits? Or you infuse our, 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 our African identity, that is our print, into those things. It might probably be, it comes in just shorts. Mm -hmm. You don't have the less to probably wear shorts. Why do you want to wear it? Have you ever turned a client down before? No, no, you don't have to turn a client down. Okay. You make sure you satisfy the client. Okay. That is one thing you have to do. Mm -hmm. And a, a client might see, uh, maybe a, a celebrity wearing a particular outfit. Mm -hmm. They want that same thing. Yeah. Maybe the, the celebrity is wearing that because of maybe his color, his structure. Mm -hmm. You might be a slim person. Mm -hmm. You want to wear an outfit that a celebrity with probably a well-built body. No, don't go. So okay. these are things that we talk we talk to clients about. So okay. every client and probably what you tell them and you advise them, if they are good to go, you go by. If not and they still want to insist you, mm -hmm. you get it done for them. Okay. And that's and when you're doing stuff like that, there are times I won't put my brand in there. Okay. Why you feel because of the trends, the reason why I don't want to put your brand. Oh, not because of the trend. It's good. 
something that is in go, a lot of people jump onto it. Mm -hmm. And commercial wise, it helps. Okay. But just because you know you have a, a brand line or an identity you are trying to protect, you look you look at it mm. in a two way and know exactly what to do to protect mm. your brand as well. Okay. So um, looking at the fashion industry in Ghana, mm -hmm. uh, do you think it's growing, huh? or you think uh, we're getting there, or you think uh, you know there's no money in the fashion industry? <laughs> fashion industry in Ghana, I would say it's growing. Is, is always growing mm. and let nobody lie there's no money in fashion, fashion in Ghana. Yeah. There's money in there. If you're doing it, well, definitely you're going to make money. Mm -hmm. You just have to structure yourself and have a plan. Mm -hmm. That is it. There are, a lot of, there are a lot of brands that are coming now that are doing equally well. Yes, one thing that I always say is when you are comparing yourself to probably people, mm -hmm. let's say, the other African countries like the Nigerians and co, mm -hmm. you might probably think we are not there yet. But in our way, trust me, we are doing marvelously well. Okay. Other other countries are probably doing in terms of numbers. Okay. But Ghanaian brands that are doing good, trust me, when you see the quality, you will love it. Okay. There are equally good brands out there doing marvelously good works. Okay. That one I'll testify to that. And ah. there's money in there. There's if, money. If you are getting the right people to appreciate what you are worth and what you are doing, there is money in there. Okay. So looking at the likes of uh, Okujeto and you know those guys back in the days when they were doing the MKOGH mm -hmm. with t-shirts. Mm -hmm. Compared to now, what do you think has changed? I would say nothing has changed. Uh, if, I, if I say nothing has changed, in, in, a, in a way I'm lying. Okay. Yes. Uh, people are still doing t-shirts. Yeah. I started with t-shirts. Okay. I started with t-shirts. Mm -hmm. while, while I was in uni, I started with a brand, a, a t-shirt brand. Before, oh, before uh, it was wrong right. Wrong right. Wrong right. <laughs> Which that was that was I had an idea of changing wrong things to right. Okay. Because then I probably I mean to textiles. I'm studying inks. I'm studying text. I, I know the rudiment when it comes to textiles and fashion. So I think I saw a lot of things. I got up with these things are all wrong things they are doing. So I, in my mind, I want to change all those wrong things to right. Okay. So I started that. So instead of a normal t-shirt, buying a normal t-shirt in town mm -hmm. to print on. And you wash it one, two, and the neck will sag. Yeah. No. Okay. I'd rather buy the t-shirt fabric, mm -hmm. sew it myself. I'll buy a t-shirt fabric I know you can probably wear it for 10 years and the neck will still be the same. Okay. And well, still do the printing high on cost it. cost of production. And still do the printing on it. And I, I can tell you, I still have outfits then. Still now, still solid. Really? And then when I started Ronga Right, I had uh, the first person who wore my Ronga Right outfit, the first celeb. Mm -hmm. Then, when Michael Eisen was playing for Chelsea. Whoa! That, that was a great moment for me because then he was wearing a, a Dorsey and Gabbana shirt. Okay. He removed it and wore my outfit. And then wow. I felt, okay, uh -huh. there is something. Was there a connect between you and Asian? It was just. So I, I had that link from my production days. Okay. I was, I was doing, I, I, I was on a film, a film project that I was doing set, and I was assistant director on that film set. Okay. And then, uh, Michael Eason was dating Nadia Buari then. Okay. So okay. Nadia was on set, set and came yeah. on that set too. Oh, so okay. one thing led to the other, and he saw the t shirt I was wearing. I was like, oh, he, he actually loved the symbol in the t shirt. Mm -hmm. The following day on set, I bought him an outfit and he said, no, he would like to wear it. And he actually removed it and wore what? Wow. The same design. So wow. then I realized, okay, then I'm, I'm doing something good. Okay. And then Michael Eason was a Chelsea, so you can just imagine. Yeah. The was... mileage was huge. Huge, huge. So one thing led to the other. From t-shirts so but coming back to your questions mm -hmm. brand like mkog mkog has a target mkog i would say even has about three facets of that brand yeah. there is a ready to wear brand there's a tailor-made wow, okay so the mkog is a brand the ready to wear that is the t-shirt and other stuff and there's a Nemaulio kujato brand okay that is for the tailor-made and, and it's still there yeah and i still give respect to that man because yeah. these are people that we used to talk to when we we're coming up the way yeah yeah. <laughs> I get him in the MKOGH yeah. and Kwesinti tribe. These are people that when we were in university, we know they were doing well. So they're people that we are looking up to. Mm. So yes, they, they were doing their thing and still there are new brands that are also doing ready to wear and still doing it well. Wow. So it's all about how you position your brand and what you do. So there's, there's nothing like there's, there's a t-shirt brand and now we are doing just that. Fashion is dynamic. It keeps on changing. Yeah. The old comes back again and becomes new. We try to 
tweak it a little bit and it goes on wow <laughs> so now uh sakwa came out with the uh, sakwa sakwa um other artists are also mm -hmm. trying stoneboy is also having a Being what do you think about artists getting involved in the fashion design industry it's it's, it's a good idea it's, it's a nice way of artists probably uh, getting revenues for themselves in other facet too mm -hmm. one thing that i think they don't do it well is mm -hmm. when they are doing it themselves okay because outside there yes the uh, jordan yes jordan, jordan had a deal with michael jordan yes Jordan. That's a deal with a, a brand, yes. right? And it is solely the brand that is producing okay, the Jordan. Jordan. Okay, okay. So imagine a SAC brand. SAC they're probably involving an brand to produce for SAC. Okay. Because we know how to go about it. We about know how it. to do it. Okay. But most of the time, the, the, the arts, they tend not to do it themselves. So they will probably think they can probably do it on their own. Mm -hmm. It is good when you just have your name on it. Okay. There is Fenty. Uh, Fenty is for, I think, Rihanna, mm -hmm. for Puma. Puma probably does Fenty for Rihanna. Yeah. There are a lot of brands and other people, other celebs or probably popular figures, they have a fashion line or probably a fashion brand, but they don't do it themselves. Okay. Here, when, they, when the artist tend to do it themselves, that is where the problem comes. Oh, okay. Are you me? Yes, there is... And, and what, what, what would you say is the problem? They, they, they are even the, the name to even propel the brand. I think it's all about management and how they go about it. Okay. It is good if the artist sits somewhere and a professional handles a brand mm -hmm. and there's a person and the artist probably takes his cut, his or her cut. It, okay. works that, it works best that way. Oh. But when the artist is probably involved in everything, trust me, the artist wants to design, the artist wants to see the affairs of how things go. No, it doesn't work. Okay. And at times to get in the right audience. Because I remember SAC, the SAC brand was mm -hmm. quite expensive. Yeah, it was. It and was. the SAC fans are mostly the young chaps who probably love hip hop, who are yeah. friends, how much can they afford? It's true. Those outfits and those outfits were expensive because they were made of quality. Yeah. I know. Yes, Sacks, the Sack brand. There was a lady by probably Yasmin behind yeah, it. Yeah, they were very, true. very high. This thing, high yes. end products. Exactly. And then the Sack fans are probably people who would love to have the Sack match. Mm -hmm. They don't have that much to yeah, buy or to purchase buy. the product. So true. all these things have to. And if you're probably dealing with somebody who's a professional, would know. Okay. Your audience base is more of the youth. Mm -hmm. The youth is not that rich. They can afford maybe a, a strap, baseball cap, mm -hmm. a bandana. Yeah. So you go into that line. Okay. But if you're probably making a jacket, expensive, trust me. How much are you going to sell? Who are you going to sell to? Yeah. So all those things come into play. Come into play. But so who are some of the artists you've worked with? Artists, plenty, plenty. Oh yeah, <laughs> plenty. you style them, right? Ah uh, yes. And I what goes mention, into styling an artist? I made mention of Michael yeah. I've done, uh, I've done Stoneboy, mm -hmm. I've done Shatawale, Dramatic, okay. Chandler Kwame. So the what 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 goes into styling an artist? It, it depends on concept. If it's for a music video, you have okay. to know the concept of the video. And uh, you've ever costumed any artist's uh, music video before? Yes, I've, I've done. I've done a Chami Kwame. Okay. Uh, uh, Chami Kwame had a versatile show. Is it a versatile okay. show? Versatile show. Yes. Oh, you I, I, did, the... I did costume for that theater program. I've been oh. in some music videos of Chami Kwame too. Tegmati, Kofi Kinata. Mm. The name goes on. It all boils down to the kind of concept and what the story is about. Okay. That is, if the person really wants to get you involved. There are some, there are some arts, they, they, they will probably just tell you, oh, I need suit, I need this, I need this for a shoot. Okay. They will pick it. Probably go and give you somebody to do their own styling. Mm. There are others too. They will probably love to sit down with you, concept-wise. Then you advise them. Okay. Let's say there's a, there's a scene, there's a, a, a dinner scene. Probably if it's a music video mm -hmm. with your girlfriend, mm -hmm. it's a night scene. Then you are, you suggest to them outfits that look good or that can probably be worn in the night. Okay. All these things come into play. If you want to wear a suit, okay, these are colors that probably goes well in the night. So let's get a suit in this color. So mm -hmm. all these things, we talk about all these things. Mm -hmm. If the person is serious, we tailor made for the person. Okay. Most of them too, they just want to probably want to pick what you already have okay. just for the shoot. Just for the shoot. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it goes in there. How difficult is it working with an artist, especially styling them? Ah, uh, if if it's a set and the production is very strong things go because everything is well planned and calculated mm -hmm. if 
it is let's say uh, there's definitely some artists might probably be stubborn than the others no, so that one there you can you can't fault them mm. when the artists are controlling the set it is quite hard okay yes there are <laughs> artists who control the sets okay. there are artists to trust me they know what it's about so mm -hmm. on time everything is arranged they know there's the scene for suit they come and wear their suit they tell they believe you're professional so they ask you okay so this shoe will it go with this belt then you advise, okay, wear this with this. This, this will go with this. This hat will go with this. Mm. It makes this production smooth. Okay. Others to know, because he has seen this and he wants to wear this, la la, that is what he wants to wear. Mm. There okay. are times that are quite hard. But uh, through professional expertise and mm. advice, some of them tend to understand and know, like, okay, this thing is good for this. You can wear this in this thing or this. Okay. And it works like that. So it's, it's, uh, it's an but up so and far, down. I've seen you mentioning, I've heard you mention only guys. Have you ever worked with the, any female celebrities before? Uh, yes. Well, I do men stuff. I don't like talking about ladies okay. when it probably comes to ladies. But have you I've ever worked, worked with any? I've worked with Adina. I've worked okay. with Adina. I've done some stuff for Adina. How I don't, I don't do like? much I mean, ladies because, uh -huh. because I'm a men's wear brand. Okay. I advise. Ladies, the ladies to cut across when it comes to styling. Mm -hmm. You know, ladies, when it comes to ladies, a lot of things come into play. Okay. Hairstyle, mm. makeup. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Especially when it comes to ladies, depending on how the outfit is, mm -hmm. fitting is key. Yeah. Fitting is key. And now, thank God, mm -hmm. Ghanaian celebs or probably female artists are embracing our culture, our heritage, and they always try to inculcate that Africanism mm -hmm. in whatever they wear. Yeah. Going on the days when you look on the red carpet, people tend up to mention foreign brands. But exactly. now, trust me, mm -hmm. they mention our the local made designers yeah. and they are doing marvelously well. Mm -hmm. We've I, I don't I haven't done any red carpet for any female, but when it comes to female performances, okay. at times they bring concept and we do it. Okay. I made mention of Adina. Yeah. I've done I've done some stuff for her. Mm -hmm. And working with females, it's quite different from male. Is it difficult? Because the females they actually know what they want. Most of the time, okay. they've already seen something okay. outside. Mm -hmm. They probably want to infuse into our setting. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that we try and remake it to probably fit our African theme. Okay. So those ones, trust me, we just imagine seeing a Beyonce in the Gaga outfit and you probably want to make it into something that will look more African. Mm -hmm. A lot of work goes into place. And trust me, there are, there are good brands out there they do female stuff and they are doing it marvelously well. I can wow. make mention of, uh, there is Kofi Akotua who does a lot of female stuff. Female there is stuff, Yatel. Yeah. They are very good at what they do. Yeah. They are very good at what they do. So you see what I'm wearing is, is mm -hmm. Louis. And mm -hmm. I got to, I went to Zat Clothing to get it. Okay. If I go out there to Miami or America somewhere, would I get a branches outfit to buy? Yes, we, we have, we have st uh, shops that we stock. Okay. Uh, when you go to when you, when you, when you go to Paris, okay, there's a shop called Sagal. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, we stock there. Aside as talking to, we have other other agents mm -hmm. who buy our products, or other shoppers who buy okay. our stuffs and sell to people. Okay, but as in like this, mm -hmm. because it's a foreign brand, it's very easy to get foreign brands on the market. Okay, but our brand because it's tailor made, mm -hmm. tailor made. It has to be tailored for you. Okay. So if you want it, you have to order it. Order, okay. If it's mass production, mm -hmm. at times with a shirt, I have a shirt called, I have a brand of okay. shirt called the Art Shirt. Art Shirt. Art Shirt. Okay. It's a fusion of our prints mm -hmm. and let me say plain fabrics or probably foreign fabrics. Okay. And it's really selling a lot. Those ones, you probably go to other shops, the Sagara I mentioned, you can probably mm -hmm. get some there. Okay. Across, we have shoppers who buy them day in day out. We ship them out day in day out okay. because, uh, let me say, Africans who are outside are now trying to identify mm -hmm. uh, the regular foreign shirt or probably the working shirt that people normally wear. Now we are trying to inculcate our print into them. Mm -hmm. and people are embracing it now. Yeah. And there is this prestige when you are outside Ghana, or probably when you are on a foreign land and you wear such stuff. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of people patronizing that. But that's we have a lot of shoppers who buy and sell it to people outside. Oh, okay. 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 That is so that is what we're Looking at looking at our industry, like our music and the movie industry, most of these celebrities we see, um Whiskey, uh, Stoneboy, mm -hmm. Shatawale, Sarkodie, 
they're always wearing Gucci, Versace uh, out there. Do you guys get offended if, if, if you see um, our local artists wearing uh, international brands representing international uh, market instead of wearing our local the oh, media. Exactly. Right. Do you guys get offended? Yes, it is it is something that I've I have always talked about when mm. I see especially brands like the names you mentioned yeah. wearing foreign yeah. foreign labels. Yes. Because trust me. And at times I don't blame them because the people that they look up to, mm -hmm. they see them in their videos but, wearing but those they are, things. They're and, Africans and they need to portray Africa out there. Yes. Now it is getting better. Okay. Now I can tell you for a fact that mm -hmm. The top names that you are mentioning, mm -hmm. they are wearing local brands. Okay. Even though they probably, yes, they can't do all local because mm -hmm. the kind of brand and mm -hmm. how they brand themselves. Okay. I, I have probably, I do stuff for Stoneboy. Yeah. I've done something with Shatawali. Okay. But they uh, wear it out here. They don't wear it when they go to the Some of the brands, some, some, some of the brands have affiliate with some brands. I know Stoneboy mm -hmm. had a deal with Tommy Hilfiger. Yes. And I still work with Stoneboy because Stoneboy wears a brand here too. Okay. If I see, uh, let's say, a SAC video and Sakura is wearing a foreign brand, mm -hmm. I'm not happy. Mm. In as much as I'm not happy, I'm sure it is purposely for the video. Okay. Because now I know Sakura wear a lot of made in Ghana brands. I know the 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 rapaholic mm -hmm. ninety percent or probably eighty or seventy percent of his performance outfits are made in Ghana. Okay. Stoneboy, the Beam concert. Mm -hmm. I know I have styled Stoneboy for shows, and I know he wears a lot of made in Ghana in there. Mm. Then it was quite hard seeing them wearing it, but now they are also trying to because they know if you don't push our brand. Mm -hmm. It is very hard to be noticed because trust me, you can't even wear the original Gucci compared to probably what is out there. Yes, yeah, true. It um, might probably be a knockoff. Yes, yes. Though there are few people who can purchase it, but a lot mm. of the, our musicians don't wear the original stuff. The original, it's true. It's because true. it's expensive. Yeah. But trust me, you can wear an original made in Ghana brand, mm. which you can also help promote. And if you are promoting it out there, People watching a video out there see you to be wearing something authentic and unique. Okay. And it also helps your brand as well. So now I say it's getting better. Mm. Going to the days was quite hard. Yes, I remember cool. I used to probably speak about these things when I see brands wearing, artists wearing foreign brands. But yeah. now it is getting better. We are getting there. <laughs> we are getting, we are getting there. there. So look here, Nat. You mentioned Stoneboy. You style Stoneboy. You style more. Do you make money off them? Yes. At times you make money. At times it's a win-win situation. So how does it work? One, one thing that I know, because they are brands, mm -hmm. they have followers. Yeah. People turn up to like what they wear. Okay. The same way the Western eye will probably wear Gucci and go like in the music and even mention Gucci in it mm -hmm. and probably talk about wearing a Rolex, what, 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 what. The same way their followers turn up to probably go and patronize that. Okay. The same way our, our artists, mm -hmm. the Stoneboy will probably wear an Abrante shirt. Mm -hmm. And you get people coming to you because because Tomo has probably won, they also want it and they patronize. Okay. So they have the influence. Okay. There are others that probably they can probably just buy it outright. Okay. There are others too, if you think the brand will help your brand mm -hmm. and you can win, you say to the person, okay, that is what I've seen. We can do this. I provide you with a costume, you help me push it, mm. and I also make returns from it. Okay. And it, help, it, it happens. Mm. Anytime an artist wear an outfit and probably mention a brand in there, mm -hmm. an artist who probably has a huge following base, people turn out to see it. Okay. And definitely we even just click on, on, on your handle and probably go and see exactly what you are doing and they turn out to patronize you too. So at times it's a win-win situation. At times too, people just buy and they use it. Mm. Okay. So what are some of the serious challenges fashion designers go through in our industry? Ah, uh, challenges, there are a lot. <laughs> but one, one key thing I know, because, because, of, because we don't have, let's say, uh, mass production units mm -hmm. that we can probably produce mass. Okay. We have our own workers, we have our own stuff. You can't do it alone, so you also always have a team. Yeah. We turn out to probably have problems with tailors, tailors that we work with. Mm. You have the dream, you are pushing an agenda. What you see, the people that you work with don't see. Yeah. When it comes to people that you work with, 
there are always challenges with public yeah. tailors. Yeah. Materials. When you, when you probably go on the market, the kind of accessories that you see on the market and the kind of things when you go outside you see, they are different. The person who probably sells an accessories on the market will tell you, if I bring a zip and I'm selling the zip 50 Ghana, yeah. you won't buy, you say it's expensive. Exactly. So why won't I bring a zip that probably costs two series or seasons. five series. Yeah. And that's it might not probably last. Mm. And these are things that happened. I remember I was in New York fashion districts. Mm -hmm. I saw a zip that cost $35. Okay. A zip, one zip. Yeah, $35. And that same zip is on the Ghanaian across central market. Mm -hmm. It costs like five cities. Whoa. So if I'm, I'm to buy that zip, $35, mm -hmm. and use it for an outfit, mm -hmm. how much am I going to sell the outfit? Yeah, it's true. So I'll, I'll buy such zip, and I remember I make an outfit full of zip, about 10 of that zip. So just calculated $5 by 10. <laughs> just zip, fabric is not zip. inclusive. Nah. <laughs> How much would I sell that outfit? Sure. Same so zip. all these things come mm. into play. And quality, quality, quality plays a role in branding. Okay. People appreciate good stuff. And when it's good, even when you see, you can feel this thing is good. Yeah. Fabric-wise, accessories, finishing, mm. all these things play a major role. Wow. They are just machines that make holes. Okay. They are machines that make just jacket holes. They are machines that make just normal shirt holes. Mm. So all these things, if you have, you are supposed to get all these things mm. for your production. It's capital intensive. So these are small, small challenges that we find ourselves into. Mm. So what, what do you think the government can do to help the fashion industry grow? Anytime this question is asked, yeah. <laughs> I, I feel we always try to push everything on the government. Okay. If 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 the right the right structures are probably put in place, mm -hmm. we are always talking about uh, the creative arts. Yeah. If the creative arts things, creative arts, the fashion industry, the music industry, the film industry, they all fall under, under the creative arts. Yes. So all, if all these structures are being probably well, mm -hmm. there's a section of maybe a fashion industry association in there. Mm. The fashion association probably they channel their problems. There are people who probably bring accessories and fabrics to come and sell. They also under that same management or probably that same association. Okay. We tend to regulate all these things. Mm. It's, 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 a, it's a big ball game structure. Oh. So when all from the top is not working, it comes down and affects we yeah, down there. Down. So it's, it's a collective thing. Collective. So we, we don't just have to put it on the government. I'm doing my best. You're also okay. doing your best. Yeah. So those who are probably in place to put their structures in place, they also have to do their best. But mm. in our own way, we also do what we can do. Wow. As I tell you, when I travel outside mm -hmm. and I'm buying stuff, I'll probably buy a uh, suit lining for my outfit. Okay. Because maybe the suit lining on the Ghanaian market is not that quality. Quality, okay. I still buy that. So, so you're talking about uh, fabrics in Ghana not quality, right? Not fabrics in Ghana not quality. You mm -hmm. can equally get good fabrics in but Ghana that are quality. But where do you get your fabrics from? Both. Both in Ghana and outside. Okay. Depending on, there are grits in everything. Mm -hmm. I made mention of, I'll probably buy some fabrics outside. I'll buy yes. some probably lining to outside. Okay. If, I, if you come to me and you want something, and I tell you, okay, I'm using this fabric, this is the cost. Mm -hmm. If you want this, the price can be probably be cheaper. Yeah. That doesn't mean it's no good. Okay. But there are grits in everything. The same way the foreign brands that we have, they mm -hmm. have grits in it. Yeah. The same way they are grits in also what we do. With oh. regards to things we use, in the collective mm -hmm. outfit that we make. Okay, so today I'm learning fashion, and you already know, fly, dope, sexy, martial up in the building, I'm Malui. All you have to do is just go to Zad Clothing inside Accra New Town, call them on 054 They will hold you down. Let's go for a commercial break. When we come back, okay, so welcome back, and you already know we're in the studios of Max TV, and we are Tune it to app close, and I'm here with Abrantia, the gentleman. We are talking fashion. Abrantia, my brother Charlie, your journey is long, man. How many collections do you have to your credit? Collection, yeah, okay. Uh, I would say I have lost count regard to collection, what? not as in, not as in it's too much, but okay. Uh, if I could probably remember, of uh, should I say 10, 11. Wow. So how does it work? I mean, you designed this today and you give it a name and then after it's gone or how does it work? Okay. So then 
Uh, I used to design collections regarding to what is actually happening or probably what is going on in my life. Okay. There are times to you get inspired by something and mm. you feel like you probably turn into a collection. Okay. When I was starting, when I, when I got my first gig to probably have a show outside, mm -hmm. I thought of, I'm going outside. How best can I probably push where I'm coming from? Okay. Ghana. Yeah. So the first thing that came into my mind is, what can I sell to the outside world? Mm. Can take it in mind. Yeah. So I did a collection called The Heritage. The Heritage. So the Heritage Collection was fully Kente Collection. Okay. And when you talk about Kente, you know probably Kente is very rich, yeah. very colorful. Mm. And trust me, I did that. And things that you can probably think when it comes to menswear. I did Kente suit, I did Kente, the, the fugu, the, yeah, the jacket. The Abada, oh. I did everything with Kente. And wow. they are probably black and white Kente too. So I did mm -hmm. everything regarding to Kente, being it shorts, jackets, I did everything. And I showcased wow. that in South Africa. South Africa. So the heritage was great. I did, I did a video for that. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely, I'm sure you can have it, you can probably show it. Yeah. And the heritage was bad. Wow. Then when I came back, what I, what, what I experienced at South Africa regarding to other designers I meet and the kind of collection they were doing, I realized, okay, there is more to it. Mm -hmm. I got inspired mm -hmm. by how nature when you travel, you're sitting in the plane and you probably look down and you see how the world is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I did a collection called Ethical Tones. Ethical no, tones. I did I did Sahara. Sahara. I did Sahara. But what inspires your collections? So that's what I'm saying. Sahara was inspired by how nature is. Okay. How you probably look at the mountains and you you you, you can just you can't just decipher how all these things come by. Sahara was Basically, Earth Colors. Okay. I'm sure that you have probably pictures that we can also show. Okay. Sahara was typically Earth Colors. From Sahara, uh, then the brand was getting big. Okay. I had another invitation, all expenses paid invitation to showcase again in Cape Town. Okay. That was South African Men's Fashion Week. Okay. Then I realized, okay, I'm here in Ghana in my small corner. Mm -hmm. I got an invitation. You're paying for your flights, you're paying for everything. Just mm -hmm. come and showcase your talent. Yeah. Wow. Then I realized God is doing something in my life. Yeah. Then I did an IE collection. A I collection mean. just to praise God. Okay. So IE is an all white collection. All white. Cool. So fabrics that come in mind are different, different fabrics that are white. Mm -hmm. I use that for the IE collection. Mm -hmm. And I showcase IE in South Africa. So I had an IE collection too. Mm -hmm. Then at a the point in time, a lot of people started asking me, why don't you do stuff for ladies? Why don't you do stuff for ladies? Mm -hmm. Then I said, okay, let me do something that the ladies can also have a feel of it. Then I did checkables. Checkables was a unisex collection. Okay. <laughs> so that that checkables. So so far you've mentioned like uh, five or six. Okay. And I can mention on and on and on. on. <laughs> I've, I've done a collaborative collection with uh, GTP. I've wow. done a collaborative collection with Vlisco. Mm. I did Vlisco. I did a classic with Vlisco. Wow. I've also All this you mentioned. Where can we get them to get something? Okay. Back? So most of the time the collection that I do, uh -huh. I do stuffs for a period of time. Okay. When it's done, it's done. Okay. But do you have some things out now? Sure, sure, sure. Current, currently, I'm, sell, I'm selling Ashets. Ashets is a collection, I would say, is a lifetime collection. Okay. Because that collection is something that I do in volumes. Mm. So if I'm going to talk about Ashets, Ashets, I'm currently on, I think, volume eight with Ashets. Mm. And it comes in, it comes in a collection of, a uh, set of six. Okay. So six, 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 six different designs, wow. eight times. So if I want something to buy, where, where do I go? There is a shop at Jowlu okay. where you can probably get Ashet to buy. Okay. And it's very easy. When you, when you probably hit us online, just pick, go online, Google Advantage the Gentleman, all okay. social media pages. You get, you get Ashet to buy. It is wow. something that is really selling. And Ashet was inspired mm -hmm. by our current president. Uh, Akufuado. Akufuado came in and he was wearing mostly prints. Yeah. So I realized, okay, what can we do with the prints? Mm. That wouldn't be boring because a lot of people just turn out to print and we just saw it print and just wear it. Yeah. But we try to get the artistic side of the print. Mm -hmm. That is how we have we came about the asset. So when you say an asset, it's not just a regular print. Okay. It's a regular print cut in a way that when you see you go like wow. Wow. So asset, we are currently selling our volume, I think volume nine, nine or eight or nine wow. for asset. Wow. And we're just still selling. <laughs> and asset is 
typically for every gentleman who sees himself mm. to be somebody who wants to go places. Yeah. And the assets are all over. You, you can see a lot of celebrities wearing the assets yeah. from John DeMello, Stoneboy. Okay, Boy, so now you're mentioning celebrities. I want you to give me your best five well-dressed celebrities in Ghana. Well-dressed? Yeah. <laughs> this question will bring my down. Yeah, you have to do one now. Well dressed. Yeah, okay. So it starts from number five. Number five? Yes. Wow. On the spot. Mm -hmm. Okay. I would say I like Trigmatic. Okay. Because he's, he's very, very Afrocentric. He likes to probably dress to depict where he's coming from. Okay. Like, like, have you ever worked with him before? Sure, 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 sure. sure. Okay. I've, I've, I've done music video with him. Okay. But in all my regular styling, I've, I've probably done. Okay. Yes. I, I like, you said artists, so you can probably be celebs. Yes, yeah, celebrities. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, I like John DeMello too. Okay. So you yeah, saw him he, before. He, 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 he always wear print that probably looks good on him. Okay. Ochami Kwame too is one. Ochami Kwame. Ochami uh, Kwame is one person who always know how to push his Africanism sense. He's very okay. good with that. Mm, made in Ghana. Made in Ghana, man. Okay, number it's two. Very good. Uh, number two, uh, I'll give it to. I'll give it to Stone Boy. Stone Boy is also okay. Well. Stone Boy. Okay. You you sold some few things for him. Yes, I've probably done Stone Boy. Okay. Yes. And uh, uh and I also mentioned Fifi Koma. Fifi Koma. Fifi Koma is yeah. one great chap. He has a very good charisma. And anytime mm. he can probably puts on the African regalia, he it really looks so, good on him. Mm. So I'll give it to Fifi Koma and then okay. a couple of few others are probably. Yeah, doing yeah. Well. All right. Yeah, Brant here. Thank you so much for coming through. A pleasure. I mean today you teach me a lot of things. Yeah, me, yeah. I'm more Gucci, Versace, and you know, swag. That, 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 of Jojo. At times, one, one in a blue moon. Uh, so, if change. I can't sponsor my team, so see, I will get Don't worry, we can talk about that. We can talk yeah. about that. Charlie, thanks so much for coming through, man. You, you, you made a show good. And I like your journey. It looks, you, you, you came from a long. Mm -hmm. hey, Charlie, thanks so much for coming through. My pleasure. All right. Okay, so. That was Abrantia, the gentleman. And you already know, today I've learned a lot about fashion. I know you've also learned a lot about fashion. Thank you so much for staying tuned. If you already know, fly, dope, sexy. All you have to do is just pick up a phone and call 0541004202 Z clothing and they will hold you down. Thank you so much for staying tuned. Same time, same place. Mm -hmm.